Good morning, and welcome to Foundation's Daily Dose. My name is Mark, and we will be going through Psalms 2, verses 4 through 6 today. With that, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Father, thank you for the book of Psalms, for it speaking so much in so many situations and different places to just about all of our, our daily activities and things that we go through. Father, as we look at this for today, just refresh our hearts that we may, may be drawn closer to you and walk in holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. With that, let's go ahead and read verses verse, uh, 4 through 6. He who sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. It's easy to look at this passage and think that God is some overbearing and malevolent deity. We see words in this passage like displeasure, wrath, and distress. These words are all true, and rightly so, for people like the previous verses of this psalm say, look to throw off the plans and will of God. We are also reminded that God is a God of emotion and will. He made us in his image with those same characteristics. We feel emotion and maybe remember some event that happened to us when we hear these words. We relate to God, we relate how God feels about these nations and kings respond to him. He laughs. He is angry. You see these same emotions, joy, sadness, and anger in Jesus, God incarnate, that is God in human flesh. God knows us and our emotions. He even invites us to pour out how we feel to him. He knows exactly what they mean and why, even when we don't. We can't have a complete relationship with God without these emotions. Like emotions, he has also created us with will in his image. That is the ability to choose to make plans. We all have it. I want to go for a walk after dinner. I like chocolate more than vanilla. A problem occurs when wills come into opposition with each other. I want to play catch while my friend wants to read. What happens? Conflict. It's ironic that in these verses, we see that the will of God made us with is used to oppose him. The difference between our will and God's will is he has the ability to make it happen. This is why God in this passage is both angry and laughs. Angry that he is being opposed and laughs in knowing the kings and the nations have no ability to make their will happen. What's God's general will for you? To know him as Savior, Lord, and Father, and submit to his plans for us. What is his, what is his specific will for you? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God reveals his unique plan for you moment by moment as we seek to know him and be transformed by submitting to his spirit. To close, God is not some far-off force that we can bend to our will or an emotionless entity. He is a person that loves us and we can have a relationship with. He has plans that will never be forced to change. It is reassuring to know that as Christians, he knows us. His plans for us are for our good and they will never change. You still have a choice daily. Whose will do you choose to follow today? 
With that, let's close in prayer. Father, we can know you, and you know ex us exactly, both intellectually, our plans, and our emotions. You have set plans in motion before the world began for our good and for us to do good works to honor you. Father, fill us with those today. In Jesus' name, amen.